My name is Christopher Kibbe. I work here at UTSA in the College of Education and Human Development as the Director of Graduate Student Services. And I will be uh, presenting some of our slides today. Okay, today we're gonna be going over a few things. I ask right now that everyone stay muted uh, while the presentation is going on. What we'll do is at the end, we'll try to leave a little bit of time for questions and answers regarding the main PowerPoint presentations before the departmental breakout sessions. If you have any questions though, please feel free to use the chat. Uh, the chat option will allow you to ask questions and we'll have an individual responding to chat questions there. If you have any specific questions that are, are specific to you and they're not a general question, please feel free instead of using the chat to email me directly. Everyone should have my email address, but if not, it is Christopher dot kibbe at utsa.edu. Uh, once again, that is Christopher dot kibbe at utsa.edu. That was uh, the same email that you received from the same individual for um, the Zoom link instructions. So uh, today, what we want to start off with is welcoming you. And then after the welcome, we'll have a few remarks from our Associate Dean uh, for Graduate Studies, Dr. Juliet Langman. And then it'll come back to me. We'll talk about the application process in general how to apply, what, what's needed to apply, some stuff going on with COVID-19 and what we're requiring. Then we'll also have a, a general financial aid presentation that I'll be doing, kind of steps on how to uh, apply for financial aid, what financial aid is out there. And then I'll go over an overview of our programs so you'll know what a breakout session to go to after the main presentation ends. So what'll happen is everyone's gonna be in this room, this break, this meeting room for the general uh, open house, and then we'll have departmental breakout sessions from 11 to 11.45 where you'll log out of this room and log into your departmental breakout room where we'll have students, current students and faculty and our student development specialists in those rooms to talk about specific programs uh, any specific program that you're interested in that is housed within that department. So at this time, I would like to go ahead and introduce Dr. Juliet Langman. Dr. Langman, did you want to share a few words with us? Yes, I'd be happy to. Good morning. I'm really pleased that you all have taken the time to join us today, and I'm really sorry that we can't um, meet face to face. Um, but we've all, I think, learned so many different things about how we can still engage in a number of the activities that we're interested in, even if it's virtually. Um, you can see on the screen the mission of the College of Education and Human Development. And I really um, am pleased to be able to talk about the ways in which the College of Education and Human Development has a, a, a broad suite of graduate programs that are available to all of you, both working professionals and those who are interested in changing careers or who are interested in changing the orientation of the work that they do either in um, school settings, whether it be as teachers, as, um, as area leads, as principals, as superintendents, as well as school counselors, school psychologists, and others who are working uh, basically for the betterment of our community. Um, you can see at the very, the last line of our mission that all programs of study include a focus in developing competencies for working effectively in multicultural and cross-national contexts. One of the things we're really pleased about at the College of Education and Human Development and UTSA as a whole is that we have the designation from the Carnegie um, Association of being community engaged. This is something that within the College of Education and Human Development we're very familiar with, but it's something that we really strive um, to achieve in all of our programs. You can see our logo uh, that we like to think of both ourselves, but more importantly, our students and our students after they finish their program as being capable of becoming agents of change in their community by being culturally efficacious, by being knowledgeable about the specific area that they are developing expertise in, by being community-based in their orientation, and by being professional. 
So I'm pleased that you're here. I hope you'll find something within the program that will be of interest to you, uh, one or more of the master's or doctoral programs, as well as one or more of the certificates. And very often what we find some students doing is pairing um, a particular degree, such as a master's program, with an additional certificate that will give you a little bit more in-depth knowledge in a particular area. The last thing that I want to say is these are unprecedented times. We're all fully aware of that. The fact that we're all here virtually is a really good indication of that. At UTSA and within the college, we're working very closely with community leaders, with the CDC and other uh, larger organizations to figure out ways in which we can continue to offer quality education and make sure that at the same time, everybody is safe. We don't know what's going to be happening in the fall. The vast majority of you are, you know, at the earliest would be joining UTSA in the fall. Um, but whether we are fully online or hybrid or um, fa fully face to face, we'll be making all of those decisions with the safety of our entire community, students, staff and faculty in mind. Welcome and let's get on with talking a little bit about the admissions process. Thank you, Chris. Thank you, Dr. Lehman. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and go into the applications process. I'm gonna go ahead and talk about how to apply at the graduate level here at UTSA. Everyone that ends up applying uh, at the graduate level, so that's either for a graduate certificate, a master's degree, a doctoral degree, any of our professional uh, certifications, um, you apply through the graduate school at UTSA. So, when you're looking at applying, uh, it, there's a few things to kind of think about before you uh, actually apply to a degree. Uh, think about what you're wanting to do with that degree. If that degree meets those goals, how you're gonna fund your degree and also a um, workload lifestyle balance. At the graduate level, you know, most of us are either full-time working, have families, have other obligations, so um, we always have to take that into account when we're uh, picking our uh, programs and uh, determining our goals and how we're gonna reach those goals. So a few general application requirements here. Uh, for our master's degree programs, we are looking for a 3.0 GPA. Of course, you have to have a bachelor's degree. Uh, we're gonna want your transcripts. Most of our master's programs do not require GRE, GMAT scores. Uh, there are just a handful that do, and we can definitely go over that in the breakout sessions. All of our doctoral programs do require uh, GRE scores, but most of the master's programs do not. So, you know, save that money, do something else with it. You do not have to spend it on uh, taking a, uh, a GRE for most of our master's degrees. Of course, filling out the online application. Some of our programs do require letters of recommendation or a narrative statement also. Narrative statements usually kind of what you're looking at uh, in regards to getting from the degree, what your career goals are. Of course, if your program does require letters of recommendation, you want to talk with the people that you're wanting to recommend you beforehand so they have an idea that you're gonna be asking for this and that they're gonna be contacting you in regards to a letter of recommendation. Uh, so these are some of the things to think about when you're uh, getting ready to apply. Uh, the domestic fee is $50, international students fee is $90. Now, there are a few um, edits right now due to COVID-19. We know this is an unprecedented time as uh, Dr. Langman had uh, talked about. So right now, what you can do is you can send your uh, electronic documents to the graduate school, and it's just graduate.documents at utsa.edu. You can PDF these and email them. Um, we will need, uh, of course, uh, official transcripts later, but we understand right now it's really difficult to get those items. So please just email your items, your unofficial transcripts or whatever you have to the graduate school and uh, they will work with those items and work with you on processing your application with those items for the time being. Okay. Also, of course, uh, right now, uh, the GRE has been tempor temporarily suspended uh, as admissions criteria. Uh, we understand right now you can't take the GRE. The good thing is most of our master's programs 
don't require the GRE anyways, but if, the, if you are in one of those programs that does, uh, we are to have temporarily suspended those for the time being. Uh, for our doctoral students, since all of our programs only admit for the fall, the next admission cycle is not till fall 2021. So as of now, um, any GREs would still be required for doctoral students because the earliest next application date would be fall 2021. Now, of course, pending on COVID-19, that may change, but for right now, that's what we're uh, working with. Uh, just a quick little note for our international students. Of course, COVID-19, we understand that, you know, there are issues throughout the entire world right now in regards to getting documents. So uh, with the TOEFL, uh, that is one of those items that, you know, is temporarily suspended. But um, when you submit your application, faculty will still be reviewing it to determine English proficiency as much as possible. We're still going to need confirmation of financial resources, uh, as soon as you can get your foreign credentials done, um, any of your uh, four-year degrees, diplomas, all that, anything that you can send, submit to us electronically, that would be uh, best to get the process moving as quickly as possible. Uh, speaking for international students, I know right now, you know, visas can be a very difficult, uh, strenuous task. Um, please understand that UTSA is working as, as well as they can. Uh, for those and you know I know it's kind of difficult to get those right now so just please be patient with your governments our government and uh, we'll do the best we can uh, pending the current situation so uh, let's talk about the application and kind of what happens so you submit your documents everything you, you fill out the application online to the UTSA graduate school website you make sure your, all your information is there, you download everything that you can download, submit all your unofficial transcripts or any official transcripts that you have also, submit them, you hit submit, you, you pay the application fee. What happens then is the graduate school does the processing behind the scenes. What they do is they gather all your materials together, anything that you may have sent in different emails or, or sent through uh, different modes of uh, receiving and put that with your application. They'll make sure everything's there or at least enough materials there to be able to send the committee to review. So what they'll do then is then submit your application and related materials to the college for the college to make a review of your application, determine if uh, they believe that uh, they can admit you or deny you based off of uh, you know, your letters of recommendation, your statement of purpose, the GPA that they're seeing, they're wanting to see a good all around student and so they'll make a determination uh, on admission. And so that admission decision will come from the department through the college back to the graduate school where the graduate school will email you your uh, official admission decision and letting you know um, what that decision is. And uh, if you admit it, then you'll be giving additional steps on your, um, how to get your UTSA email, your banner ID, how to log in for classes. You'll also be getting uh, additional contacts from your department. In particular, probably your student development specialist and your faculty advisor greeting you for the, to the program, giving you information on how to register, uh, programs of study, all those tools and tricks that you'll need to start your academic journey here at UTSA. Uh, we do have a VIP process for current uh, undergraduates and people that have just completed UTSA. Uh, if you are interested, if you want to see if you're eligible for that or interested in that, uh, feel free to email me directly and uh, we can see if one of the programs that you're interested in does do the VIP. And once again, this is for current UTSA undergraduates and uh, alumni within the past one to two years. So um, with the application, once again, make sure to review the deadlines. All the deadlines are on the graduate school website. Uh, I do know that the counseling, if you're interested in the clinical mental health counseling, that deadline is quickly approaching for the fall semester. Most of our other programs, have an August 1 deadline. 
Now, that, that I am saying most, so there may be a few that are a little bit different. I do know our Master of Arts in School Psychology program has already met the uh, amount of students that it can probably take for the fall semester due to accreditation guidelines. So um, we would be transferring those applications to the next available uh, application cycle. So uh, for most of our programs, we're still taking fall admissions. We have plenty of time. Uh, most of the programs are August 1. I will say if you're interested in the uh, counseling programs, clinical mental health in particular, uh, you might want to get that application done just a little bit quicker. Of course, um, international deadlines are a little bit sooner, so make sure to pay attention to those. Uh, once again, the deadlines vary between program, as we had already alluded to, and uh, try to get your application in early because with COVID-19 and processing everything electronically, uh, it makes it a little more difficult for the graduate school processors to get everything, combine everything, send it all to the departments for the review. Uh, it has been an interesting experience, so definitely uh, give us enough time to work with you and get you in for the semester that you want to apply for, okay? Uh, one last thing, completed applications must be submitted and posted by the deadline. So if you do see, for example, an August 1 deadline for a domestic student for, say, for example, the Educational Leadership Program, we would want all the materials and we want you to submit your application on or before that day, preferably a lot before that day. So if you have any questions regarding the applications, definitely contact the graduate admissions at utsa.edu. If you wanna make sure they received an email with a transcript, uh, if you wanna make sure you submitted your application correctly, definitely contact them. I will say probably try to stay away from the phone number um, because um, they have individuals checking that number, but it's definitely a lot easier to go through the email and just email them your, your question and they will get back to you. Uh, if you want, Take a picture of this slide really fast. Just that way you have that email. And we'll go ahead and talk about financial aid. So uh, for financial aid at the graduates, graduate level, you are primarily looking at um, loans. There are some grants, there are some scholarships, uh, but in regards to federal financial aid, most of it is loans uh, with the federal government. Now, there are some enrollment requirements in regards to financial aid. So uh, first off, you need to be a fully admitted graduate student at UTSA. If you're taking undergraduate classes for any reason, say they're background classes or leveling classes, those don't count towards uh, your enrollment requirements, okay? Also, you do have to be a degree-seeking student. So if you're interested in being a special graduate, so whether that be a graduate certificate or you're just coming back in to get, say, your reading specialist or superintendency or just principal certification, if you apply as a special graduate, unfortunately, you're not eligible for, for federal financial aid. So UTSA is not able to provide that aid because per federal guidelines, you're not eligible for financial aid. Uh, also, our certificate programs, you're not eligible for aid, except if you're looking for just your general po uh, post back teacher certification. For those individuals just getting initial teacher certification, that's not the professional certifications, but initial teacher certification, uh, you can get some aid for that. What you're looking at in regards to aid is you do need to be enrolled in at least part-time or full-time. Part-time is considered at least four hours. Uh, most of our classes are two credit, or two, uh, two classes equals six hours. Most classes are three credit hours each. So usually, if you're looking for part-time status, it would be two classes for a total of six hours or a uh, full-time you can take nine hours or three classes. Now you can't take a few more than that, but I would probably not recommend it in your first semester. Definitely get your feet wet first, 
figure out how, how everything's working, how you can balance that school, work, home life, and make sure to have that balance before you know, taking too many classes all at once. Summer hours are a little bit different. We understand the summer's a little bit smaller. So um, the part-time and full-time requirements are a little less in the summer. So there are different types of aid, okay? There's um, institutional aid. So that would be like, say, scholarships or whatnot through UTSA, maybe a few UTSA grants. There's uh, grants through the state. There's also state aid. And of course, mostly there's federal aid. And so that's um, with filling out the FAFSA and everything. So there's different types of aid, of course. You have your grants, which are usually your free monies, monies that you don't have to pay back. Uh, scholarships are also free monies, but you usually have to apply for those. There could be inside UTSA scholarships, outside UTSA scholarships, uh, but they're also usually free monies also, but you, there's usually an application process for that. Um, work study, there actually still are, are work study positions if you're interested in those at the graduate level. And of course, um, there are loans also, uh, different types of loans, loans backed by the federal government. There's loans you can get through your um, financial institutions, but we'll go over all that in just a little bit. So first things first, how do I apply? first thing you need to do is apply for your FSA ID. There's the website to do it. This would be a wonderful slide to take a picture of. Uh, that way you have it easily available. Also, you want to definitely fill out your FAFSA. So you'll go to the fafsa.ed.gov, fill out your FAFSA. Um, there's the deadlines for filing your FAFSA. Those are suggested deadlines uh, for here for UTSA because for graduate students, Sometimes the free monies go to first come, first serve. Some are based off of income, but some are also based off of first come, first serve. So you definitely want to file your FAFSA as soon as possible for that next upcoming year, okay? So speaking of filing FAFSAs, this is some of the information that you're going to need, your income tax, W-2s, you know, all the information that you usually use for your taxes. But... Here's a nifty thing that they did not have around when I was a student at UTSA. You can actually work with the FAFSA, and when you're filling everything out, they have this wonderful little thing at the bottom where it says, uh, linked IRS. So you no longer have to actually type in everything. You can actually click the link, and it will pull all the information that you put in that previous year. So, um, you know, this is just, not a true student as the name Jane Doe would show, but what it does is it pulls all the information that you submitted electronically to the IRS and will dump all that information in the FAFSA for you, making it easier to make sure you don't make any mistakes on those items. I mean, still, please, yes, of course, review it, make sure everything's correct, but it takes some of the time and painstaking energy that it, take, it used to take to fill out that FAFSA. It makes it a lot easier, a lot more simple, a lot nicer. So um, what they do is they take your income tax and there's information that you fill in in the FAFSA to find out some um, estimated family contributions. What they use or what they take is different things that you answer to determine your estimated family contribution. Number one, income assets, how much you're making, your household size, are you a dependent versus independent, how many people in your family are in college, um, the age of the oldest parent, or um, if you're a dependent or whatnot, because they take all these into um, consideration when determining estimated family contribution as determined by the federal government. And of course, there are special circumstances, uh, and you can definitely contact financial aid if you do have like a special circumstance that comes up. Say somebody ends up losing their job halfway through, and you're wanting to... Uh, wanting to have that taken into consideration. So we have the estimated family contribution. There's of course a cost of attendance. Now I don't want anyone freaking out at that number on the bottom of the screen. That's just an estimated cost of attendance. What they do here is they add in a general tuition and fees, what they think books might cost, housing, meals, and housing is, you know, most of us are already paying for our housing. We're not going to be living on campus, but they take that into consideration in regards to like you have to have a place to live. You already have one. 
So that's not part of tuition and fees, of course, but uh, they take that into consideration. Transportation, you know, like how are you gonna get to UTSA, personal miscellaneous, loan fees. So what they end up coming with is a total cost of attendance. So in, so in order to determine need, they take that cost of attendance, so what it, take, what it costs to come to UTSA, not just tuition and fees, but also, you know, you pay for your rent, your utilities, all that stuff. They minus out that estimated family contribution that we saw in just a couple of slides and determine need. With that need, that determines what types of aid you can be awarded. And once again, that could be grants, scholarship, work study money, loans. That's how they come up with that number as determined by the federal government. So everyone wants to know these. Uh, there are some grants at UTSA. Um, a lot of times you gotta be a, a Texas resident. They are need-based. We also have a few other grants that might be eligible. Uh, do also know that some of these are first come, first serve. So definitely make sure to get that application, that FAFSA in as soon as possible. Uh, it doesn't cost any money to fill out the FAFSA. It just takes a little bit of time. So definitely just fill it out and see what you're eligible for. And then you can make the determination if you want the money or not. So, and we also have scholarships here at UTSA. Now I will say this is once again something that I would definitely, once you fill out your FAFSA, go ahead and log into UTSA Scholarship Hub, fill out the general application. What happens is as soon as you fill out that general application, it'll ask you, you know, for information regarding you and everything. And then it'll link you up to all the scholarships at UTSA that you're eligible for. So for UTSA scholarships, it takes out the guesswork. It takes out, oh, can I get this one? Can I get that one? Based off of the information you provide and what we have already on file for you, it'll say, okay, you know, you're, you've applied for the UTSA General Scholarship, so we'll put that in the system. And then in addition to that, you're, the other scholarships we have that you're eligible for based off of what you've added. Now, there also may be college and departmental scholarships. I do know for a fact we actually have one uh, doctoral scholarship happening just now as we speak. And one of the requirements in order to fill out that application is to actually do your general UTSA scholarship again. So make sure to do that because some of even the college scholarships or the departmental scholarships, that might be a requirement in order to be eligible for those. Also, um, there are outside donors also. A good website to go to is fastweb.com. Also, definitely go to the UTSA scholarship webpage. And the UTSA scholarship webpage, they'll have a link to outside scholarships. And take a moment, click on that link, all those should be uh, good scholarships because um, sometimes we live in a world that you know people do try to take advantage of others. So the best rule of thumb is in regards to scholarships outside UTSA scholarships. Inside we're fine, but you know definitely look for those outside scholarships. But a good rule of thumb with those is when you're applying, if it asks you for money, you know you're in a scam. Okay, when it comes to scholarships. You should never have to uh, uh, pay money to get money. So that's a telltale sign. That's not, not a good link. Uh, somebody's trying to take advantage of you. If you ever have to pay money to get money for a scholarship, it's no good. So definitely take a look at the UTSA scholarships website because all those have been looked at. You know, we've kind of done like a, a look at to make sure these are good scholarships. Might even be scholarships that we've worked with outside donors from UTSA before. So jump on there, jump on the scholarships website, take a look. Um, I will also say with scholarships before we jump on to the fellowships is treat them kind of as a job. What I used to do is I would quote unquote clock in for a couple hours, do some research, look at scholarship options, do a couple applications, a lot of them require an essay, do the essay and then clock out. Say you clocked in, you know, three hours and you applied for four scholarships, and yes, you only got one. And that scholarship was, you know, let's say $300. Well, I mean, if you look at it, 
for three hours of work, you made $300. So yes, it's not a big scholarship, but that's $100 an hour you just made right there. So when you take that into perspective like that, it, it you know, totally changes it. And a lot of these outside scholarships, even some of even UTSA, people don't end up applying for it. And those scholarships, money just go unused. So definitely take the time, apply for the scholarships, apply for everything that you're eligible for. Fellowships. Fellowships here within the College of Education and Human Development are, are for our doctoral students. We do have, uh, some of them can be grant funded, some of them are, uh, they're research involved. Um, there may be even some teaching aspects to it. Um, our fellowships for doctoral students and therefore our full-time doctoral students that are not working outside of UTSA. So say you come to UTSA as a doctoral student, uh, you apply, you get admitted, you apply for a fellowship, you receive a fellowship. These are for doctoral students that are looking at coming to UTSA full-time. Uh, the fellowships are competitive. They will pay your tuition, they'll pay all your fees, they'll give you a monthly stipend also. For these, once you're admitted, you would apply through your departments for those fellowships. Assistantships, we also do have a few assistantships at UTSA. Uh, for our GRAs, which are graduate research assistants, and TAs, which are teaching assistants, those are usually our doctoral students. Our GAs, which are graduate assistants, those can be doctoral students or master's level students. Um, some of our assistantships, assistantships relate to their degree, some don't. Um, I know all of our student development specialists email at least a few times a month announcing different assistantships that we have available. Most of these are 19 hours, non-benefits eligible. Uh, pretty much you, you clock in, you get paid for the hours that you work. They are handled through HR, like for example, you'll be you know, completing the typical employment package here at UTSA. And you usually apply through your department. Uh, some of them you might apply for the college, or if we're announcing them throughout the year, you apply through whoever is announcing that scholarship or uh, assistantship. Once again, uh, we think work studies, we think that's undergraduate thing. There are work study monies available at the graduate level, um, but you of course have to say you're interested in, on your FAFSA, uh, they're based off of need. Um, so that is an option also. And then of course we have to go into uh, lumps. So once all the free monies have been exhausted, um, the best option is loans. Now, some of these loans, uh, the unsubs unfortunately, the federal government doesn't have the subsidized loan anymore for graduate students. Uh, that's a, a federal guideline. It is just unsubsidized loans now. But definitely, I would say pick that one first. And then if you need more than that, graduate plus loan and then after that, an alternative loan, okay? Usually the interest rates on these, from the highest one, uh, well, I mean, the, the highest one on the list is the unsubsidized, that's the lowest interest rate. So the top one there, that's probably a better way to say it, the top one there, the unsubsidized Stafford loan has the lowest interest rate. And then as you work down, the interest rates go up. Also, you'll notice credit worthiness is assessed, and some of them can, can be variable instead of fixed. So definitely uh, do the Stafford loans if you need loans before you do any others. And of course, speaking of that, we need to talk a little bit about responsible, responsible borrowing. Uh, definitely only borrow what you need. Try to use all free monies first. If there's anything you can cut before you take out money, definitely do that. Um, I'm gonna use myself as an example. Uh, when I was, uh, working on my master's degree. Um, I, applied, of course, applied for my FAFSA and everything like that. And, you know, it gave you a grand total of the total amount you can have. And it just looked too good to be true. So I clicked, yes, I want it all. And so uh, for my two years of my master's degree, I, I continued to say, yes, I want it all. And uh, that definitely, looking back, was not the, the brightest idea I have, have ever had. Um, probably would have been better to not take as much. Uh, it's, I will say, about six months ago, so this is about 15 years later, I finally was able to pay off those student loans. Yay! So take it from me. Please only borrow what is needed. 
you know, those, those loans you do have to pay back and, you know, it, it, it takes a while. So definitely make sure, take my advice, learn from my mistakes, just borrow what's needed, okay? Uh, one last thing, in regards to, of course, your financial aid, we have to make sure that you're making satisfactory, satisfactory academic progress here at UTSA. So what does that mean? That means we're looking for uh, you maintaining a GPA of 3.0 or higher, okay? Now, that's nothing that we're not requiring out of any students in any program. All of our programs at the graduate level require that you have at least a 3.0 GPA to stay a student within the programs. So we're just wanting to make sure you're doing well in the program. Also, your course completion rate needs to stay at two thirds. So, um, we want to make sure when you're registering for classes that you're staying in those classes, you're completing those classes. If UTSA sees that, say, for example, the first semester you drop out of all your classes, and then the second semester you drop out of your classes and you're taking all this financial aid, they're like, whoa, wait a second, what's going on? You'll be contacted and they'll try to figure out, work with you, find out what's going on because we need to make sure that you're, you know, making progress to complete that degree. Also, speaking of that, we love to have you at UTSA. We also want you to leave UTSA and do wonderful things after UTSA. So we do have a maximum hour rule. A lot of our degrees are 36 hours. So what we do is we multiply that degree times 1.5. So you can go over half of what that degree is. And then once you hit that number, so say if you're a 36 hour program, you hit 54 hours, UTSA is gonna go like, hey, what's going on? We love having you here, but it, you know we, we want you to you know succeed outside of UTSA also. So we want you to graduate. So they will stop you and say, "Hey, what's going on? We want to make sure you know you're able to uh, go forth from UTSA and do great things." So there is a maximum amount of hours, and that will depend on degree. This is just an example: 36 hours. If you're like in a 60-hour program, of course that goes up to then 90 hours. So uh, just take that into consideration also. So um, if you have any questions regarding financial aid, definitely email one stop at utsa.edu. I would say come visit, but unfortunately, due to COVID-19 right now, um, visitations just don't work. Email one stop at utsa.edu. Uh, if you have any uh, specific questions, definitely contact them. If there's any general questions, uh, Joanne's taking questions as we speak. And hopefully at the end, I'll have just a little bit of time to maybe take a couple questions, but we'll see. Okay, what we're going to go over now is just an overview of the graduate programs at UTSA. Because the next thing after this is the breakout sessions. And you need to know which breakout session to attend. So we want to make sure we let you know what degrees are offered in what breakout session. That way you know which breakout session to attend. So once again, what's going to happen is after we finish this, um, you're going to log out of this, this room and go into a new room where that department will have its, its breakout sessions where the student development specialists will be, where faculty will be, and where uh, uh, some of our current students will be. And they'll go over specific questions you have regarding the degree that you're interested in. Okay, but in order to know that, you kind of need to know what's where. So, first off, our Department of Bicultural Bilingual Studies. Our Department of Bicultural Bilingual Studies has a doctoral degree in uh, Doctor Philosophy in Culture, Literacy, and Language. It also has a Master of Arts degree in Bicultural Bilingual Education and a Master of Arts degree in Teaching English as a Second Language. We also have graduate certificates. Now, these aren't certifications through the state of Texas. These are graduate certificates, okay? Bilingual reading specialists and teaching English as a second language. Now, there are certification options also available, which are different than certificates. Certifications are awarded through the state of Texas. So what I'm talking about here is in the Master of Arts in Bicultural Bilingual Education, we have an initial teacher certification option, okay? So if you're interested in uh, getting your bilingual ed teacher certification and a master's degree, we have a program that will get you both your master's 
and your bilingual ed teaching certification. Same thing with teaching English as a second language. We have a Master of Arts in teaching English as a second language where you can all get your master's degree and your ESL certification, okay, through the state of Texas. Of course, you have to take the state administered examination and everything, but we'll get you ready to take that examination through the state. Next is our Department of Counseling. So in our Department of Counseling, we have a Doctor of Philosophy in Counselor Education and Supervision. We have a Master of Education in School Counseling. So this is also for um, teachers that are interested in becoming school counselors. Uh, if you want to become a school counselor, this would be the degree for you. This would get you the uh, professional certification in regards to uh, school, ca uh, school counseling. Of course, do remember for that degree that you do have to have two years of teaching experience to become a school counselor. That's not a UTSA requirement. That it, well, it is, but it's a state requirement. So if you're interested in being a school counselor, please remember you have to be a teacher first before you're, in, before you're a school counselor. We also offer a Master of Science in Clinical Mental Health Counseling. So that's like uh, community counseling, where, like you want to become an LPC, Licensed Professional Counselor in the state of Texas. That's the degree for you. We also have grad, uh, graduate certificates in bilingual counsel, counseling and integrative behavioral health care. Okay, um, I will say that our uh, programs in counseling are KCREP accredited, which is a big thing in the counseling world. It's a national credential. Uh, it helps it helps a little easier going from state to state because every state has their own rules and regs in regards to uh, counseling, just like in regards to teaching. So if you come from a KCREP accredited institution, it's a little easier for that state to be like, oh, okay, well we we. We know KCREP um, you know, makes transferring from state to state a lot of times easier. Also, a lot of programs, if you're ever interested in going on and getting a PhD in counseling, a lot of them require that you come from a KCREP accredited program. So uh, just to know, there are uh, certification options in regards to LPC during this, or licensure options in regards to LPC in this department, and then your certification school counseling is within this department also. Our Department of Educational Psychology has a uh, Master of Arts in School Psychology. So if you want to work in the school district as a school psychologist, uh, we also um, offer a Master of Arts in Educational Psychology. And that has two different areas of em emphasis or two different concentration, educational co uh, psychology concentration and then behavioral assessment and intervention concentration. Now with the behavioral assessment and intervention concentration, that is uh, usually people that are specifically interested in BCBA, becoming a board certified behavioral analysis. Uh, a lot of our uh, individuals in that program are looking for that. Uh, you can do that within other programs. You can link it up to like, say for example, your school psychology program, or even maybe even the general program. I don't know why you do the general and not do the behavioral then, but there are different options. But most of our uh, students within the BCBA program are usually within the educational psychology or school psychology program. We also offer graduate certificates in applied behavioral analysis, language acquisition, and bilingual social educational assessment. I cannot believe I got that out without stumbling over it. <laughs> and program evaluation. Now, our programs uh, are NASP accredited, which is a big thing in the school psychology uh, realm. And of course, once again, there are certification options and licensure options. The licensure options, of course, being the uh, board certified behavior analysis. Our Department of Educational Leadership and Policy Studies has a doctor, doc, uh, doctor of philosophy in educational leadership with two different emphasis areas, one being ed leadership, K-12 administration, and the other being higher ed administration. So that'd be like community college or university administration. Also has uh, two master's degrees, one in, ed, uh, both are a Master of Education, one is in Educational Leadership. And so that's in case you're interested in principal certification, they do have also a few other concentrations within that program. Uh, so for example, like te teacher leadership and policy. And then also we have a Master of Education in Higher Ed Administration. So once again, that's community college or uh, four-year university administration. Uh, that area does also offer a graduate certificate in higher ed administration, and there are certification options available within this department. 
So if you're interested in principal certification or superintendency certification, these are also within the Department of Educational Leadership and Policy Studies. Please remember, in order to be a principal or a superintendent, you do have to have been a teacher first to be a principal and then have your principal certification in order to be a superintendent. Next, we have our Department of Interdisciplinary Learning and Teaching. They have a Doctor of Philosophy in Interdisciplinary Learning and Teaching that has five different areas of emphasis, curriculum and instruction, early childhood, reading and literacy, special ed, special education, and instructional technology, okay? We also have a, a Master of Arts degrees. We have five of them, a Master of Arts in Curriculum Instruction, a Master of Arts in Early Childhood Elementary Education, a Master of Arts in Reading and Literacy, Master of Arts in Special Education, and a Master of Arts in Instructional Technology. This department also offers a graduate certificate in interdisciplinary STEM education. I will say there's also initial teacher certification options within the Master of Arts degree in curriculum and instruction. Uh, you can get your initial teacher certification in four through eight, uh, English language arts, social studies, or math science. So if you're looking at getting your initial teacher certification in those areas, we do have the Master of Arts in Curriculum and Instruction that you can actually do the master's degree and uh, take the classes required to get that initial teacher certification. It was wonderful getting to talk to you. Thank you very much. I really appreciate you taking time out of today to come visit with us. Uh, it's greatly appreciated and uh, Thank you and good luck in all your future endeavors.